What's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I am the Narc's Nemesis. If you're watching me on YouTube, y'all make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. That helps the YouTube algorithm push this content out. That way more people can get it. Somebody liked it for you, so make sure you like it for somebody else. Um, man, somebody, somebody had, had commented not too long ago that they heard my song on the radio, and I think I accidentally deleted the comment because when I was reading it I was on the phone I pressed some shit and I can't find it so if you're that young lady who commented and said you heard my song on the radio I want to know what radio station it was and what song it was because um, I deleted it on accident because I can't find it so if you are that young lady make sure you let me know in the comments so you know we can have a conversation about that um, anyway um Y'all make sure y'all like the video. Um, if y'all need one-on-ones, y'all make sure the link is in the description. Um, if y'all have any questions, any comments, you know what I'm saying? A one-on-one -on -one is a great way to, to kind of express that and get that one-on-one -on -one kind of treatment. Also, if you want to donate to the channel, the link is in the description. You don't have to. Like I said about that scam shit, y'all be careful because I never ask y'all for money. I give y'all the option to donate. And if y'all do, y'all do. If y'all don't, y'all don't. It's fine. So if somebody is in my comments asking y'all for money and investment, I told y'all, I don't know no motherfucking name, Kevin, Grant, Bo, whoever the fuck they said, I don't know them. So y'all make sure y'all not out here giving these fools money. But anyway, today we're going to talk about redefining the narcissist. You need to redefine your perception of them. And what I mean by that is we get so stuck on this person that we met at the beginning that we let it override the reality of who they actually are. And that's what keeps a lot of us stuck because we're so hooked on what they were, how they made us feel in the beginning, how they made us feel on this day or whatever the case is, all the cheating, all the lying, the gaslighting, the uh, projecting, all of that gets overlooked because we're still living in the fantasy that they painted for us. And I tell people, you have to separate the fantasy from the real person. Uh, a lot of people are like, but I love them. I love, you know, how they made me feel, whatever the case is. And you love that person in the beginning, which is you, because that's who they mirrored to you to attract you. That person that they are at the end, that's who they really are. That's the essence of who they really are. Y'all ever notice it just feels like you were with two different people. Like that person at the beginning was somebody and that person at the end was somebody. That's the absolute truth. Um, like I tell y'all, lies vary. They come in all shapes, sizes, and it's always a different story. It's always a different person. It's always a different place. It's always a different excuse. But the truth is constant. If you want to know why, like, if you want to know the difference between, you know, the lie and the truth, just look at what's constant. Their negative behavior, the gaslighting, the projection, all that good stuff, that was almost constant in y'all's relationship. Them acting like they had some fucking sense was variables. Like, they did it in variables. You know what I'm saying? They'll sprinkle a little nice li a little niceness in right here. Then they'll hit you with some dumb shit, sprinkle some niceness in, hit you with some dumb shit. And that's meant to distort your reality. Because when they do that, you know, they're doing the gaslighting, the cheating, or whatever. You'll always revert back to the well, I don't think they'll do that because remember they were such a nice person on this date. Remember, you know, they bought me flowers for my birthday or, you know, they made this occasion so special. So it can't be the same person. So you start tricking yourself out of reality. They don't have to do it for you at this point. You do it for them. They don't have to run no game on you. You start running game on yourself. You start forgetting that you know, a person that actually treats you right, a person that's actually good for you wouldn't do any of these things. So you start making excuses for 
the reality that you want to live in. So you start overriding, you know, the, the toxic traits and you start overriding, you know, um, the lying, the gaslighting and all that stuff. You start making excuses for it and you distort your own reality. And you start living in the reality that they want you to live in. That's one of the narcissist's ultimate goals is to make you forget your own reality because in your reality, they're not valid. In your reality, they're not important. In your reality, they're a piece of shit. In your reality, they're a liar. In your reality, they're not worth your time. But if they can convince you that your reality is not reality, then the rules change. So if they can get you not to believe in your reality and to believe in their reality, now they have a chance. Now they have a fighting chance at um, manipulating you. Now they have a fighting chance at, um, you know, making you feel some type of way. Now they have a fi uh, fighting chance at manipulating you, gaslighting you. Now they have a fighting chance at making you feel like shit because now the rules change. In real reality, this shit doesn't work. It's not valid because facts are facts. Once they're able to start, um, you know, maneuvering and manipulating around the facts, then they can start telling you what's real because now yours is invalid. They can tell you one plus one is five because now you no longer believe one plus one is two. That's how they operate. They get you to forget what your reality is. And along with that, when you forget what your reality is, you forget who you are. So they make you forget that you're a nice person. They make you forget you're a good looking person. They make you forget that you're a genuine person. They make you forget you're a loving person. They make you forget you're handsome, you're beautiful, you're talented. They make you forget these things. And when you forget who you are, when you forget who you are, that leaves room for anybody else to tell you who you are. And they're in complete control when they can tell you who you are. Because nine times out of 10, if you give somebody the power to tell you who you are, it's always less than who you really are to make them feel better. Because anybody that wants power over you to tell you who you are is automatically insecure about themselves. So they're automatically going to try to put themselves on a pedestal because they're intimidated, because they're inferior, because they know they can't gain favor in this situation unless they sit above you. Because if they really just, if you really just start putting shit on paper and start comparing you to the narcissist, and it's not saying anybody's better than anybody, but let's face it, in this situation, you are better than this piece of shit because they ain't worth a damn. If you start putting shit on paper, you beat them by a long shot and they know this. Don't let them fool you, they know this. So what they gotta do, they gotta turn into that used car salesman and sell you a fucking lemon and sell you a dream. They wanna sell you a 1992 fucking Hyundai, Honda Civic with 130,000 miles on it for $700 a month. That's what the fuck they wanna do. And if you forget you want a fucking scat pack fully charged, you know what I'm saying? If you forget you want a Ferrari, if you forget you want a Porsche, you will settle for that goddamn Honda that they trying to sell you. Don't fall for it. Like I said, they try to talk you out of, they, out of your reality because in order to control something, you have to convince it that its value is not valid. You know what I'm saying? At least somebody controls somebody. You have to convince them that they're not as valuable as they think. That way, if somebody can tell you your value, if somebody can tell you your worth, or if you don't know your worth, anybody can come tell you your worth, whatever, and you'll believe it because you don't truly know who you are. That's why I always tell people, while you're alone, while you've been discarded, while you've been at the house, whatever the case is, do the self-work because the self-work is going to save your fucking life. Do the self-work. Go to the gym. Go to therapy. Stop worrying about what they're doing. Stop worrying about that other supply. I know it's easier said than done, but you got fucking work to do. Go cook. 
Go raise the kids. Some of y'all ain't seen y'all kids in so long because y'all been running back and forth with this dumbass. Go see your kids. Go love your kids. Your kids miss you. Go draw. Go read a book. Go study something. Go back to school. Go do something. A lot of y'all aren't healing because you got too much fucking free time. Go get busy. Go do something. Go write a song. Go do something. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, man, do the self-work so you can know what you're worth. So you can know when something presents itself that's not in your best interest, you know how to defend yourself from it. Uh, when somebody comes and disturbs your peace, you don't feel guilty about getting them the fuck away from you. Because some people, you're going to have to learn how to dismiss them at the door. Nah, we ain't doing that shit over here. Because I've seen the movie before. I'm good. You're going to have to get to that point. <clears throat> um, like I said, man, they are fucking used car salesmen. They're trying to trick you out of your reality. They're trying to trick you out of who you really are. A lot of y'all can even testify that during a relationship, you actually forgot who you are. There was a point in time where I was looking in the mirror and I did not recognize myself. And I looked the same, but I didn't feel the same. And you really look how you feel. If you feel if you look good, you feel good. You know what I'm saying? If you feel good, you know you're going to carry yourself a different way. And you know they break you down systematically and gradually to a point where you don't feel like yourself anymore. When you vacate yourself your identity when you vacate that you leave room for anybody to take over and nine times out of ten if somebody's trying to take over they do not have good intentions for you that's just what it is there ain't no math to it or none of that these folks have no good intentions for you stop holding on to that illusion i know it hurts i know you know, you had hopes and dreams for y'all's future. Y'all were going to buy the house, have the kids, do all of this shit there. But you have to start judging people by the fruit they bear. If, <clears throat> case in point, when I was running the streets, you know, they got the killers, they got the dealers, they got this person, he the hustler, this the uh, credit card guy, this the guy with the guns, this the guy with this, this whatever. Everybody had a role and everybody had a reputation in which you trusted them for. And you treat them as such. This person did this, so you hold them to that standard. Oh, this motherfucker steal cars. So in that in that um in that light, I don't trust you around my car because you have a history of stealing cars. This motherfucker sell drugs. I trust you only to be a drug dealer. I'm not finna say, oh, well, you sell drugs, but, you know, I want to, you know, trust you around my kids or some shit like that, whatever the case is. And, I, and, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody, but what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is trust people to be what they are. You know, that's like fucking having um, Michael Myers come meet your family or some shit. Oh, I know this is a notorious serial killer, but, man, I want, I really want you to meet my family. What? Notorious serial killer, but you think he finna come meet your family, everything finna be cool. It's finna be a fucking bloodbath. Same thing with a narcissist. A lot of y'all see the type of fruit that they've produced in their life. But see, they come with this fucking love bombing and they come with this mirroring and shit, so that overrides what you already see in the background. See, a lot of us, we saw this shit coming, but we didn't want to acknowledge it. We didn't want to validate it. Trust people to be who they are. If you meet a guy and, excuse me, if you meet a guy and this motherfucker got seven baby mamas, why would you sign up to be number eight? And this is not me talking about people who have multiple kids. Multi I'm just saying, why would you expect any different it's the same thing. If you got a guy and he done had four, five, six wives, why would you sign up to be number seven and just think that you just finna magically change what he's already shown you to be evident in his life? There is a pattern there. Not saying nothing's wrong with these people. I'm not saying that anything like 
they're any less than anybody. But I'm saying there is a pattern there that you need to pay attention to and focus. If you see somebody that led a trail of destruction, that that's why when you um when you go to fill out for a job interview, they ask you your previous history. It's not so they can you know, uh, just so they can be nosy. They want to know what have you done in the past that allows me to trust you in this position that you're, um, that you're applying for. They want to look at your work history to see, can you, can you first, how long do you keep a job? Second, do you have the fucking experience? They want to look at your criminal record because if some theft shit come up, they're going to treat you as a thief. And I'm not saying that people can't change and people can't rehabilitate, but they're going to be less likely to take a chance on you because they're going to treat you as such. Now, some people might take a chance on you, but what I'm saying is look at the fruit people done bear. Look at patterns that people done left. Look at behaviors that people exhibit. Before you come and let them into your life and think it's going to be a whole 360, 180 when they meet you. Trust people to be who they are. Trust people to be what they've shown you consistently. Not saying people can't change, but nine times out of ten, if somebody's consistently doing something, that's them. That's what they do. You ever seen, you ever, you know what I'm saying, had that cousin... Or uncle or whatever, Annie, whatever, they just keep in and out of jail, in and out of jail. It, it's consistent. That's who they are. And again, this is not talking down on anybody. I'm just getting y'all to understand behavioral patterns. Because these are things that we need to take moving forward when we're dating, when we're screening people, whether it's friendships, jobs, business relationships, anything like that. You need to screen people and you need to take people for what they've shown you not what you hope from them but what they've shown you but anyway i'm gonna get up off of here uh y'all make sure y'all like comment and subscribe if y'all want to donate to the channel link in the description again that young lady who said they heard my song on the radio please tap in with me in the comments i'm really interested to see what song was it what station and what state or country it was in so make sure you tap in with me um if y'all need a one-on-one, -on -one, link is in the description. If y'all need merch, link is in the description. Again, y'all make sure y'all check out my single, Superstition. It is out on all platforms, and it is available on the channel. And it does feature a voicemail of my ex narc trying to hoover me, and I'm not going for it. So y'all tap in. I appreciate the support with that. And another day, another way. And you ain't got to listen, but I know you heard me.